Happy Monday. Welcome back to uh, Chair League game today. That was not the correct game. Mitchell, welcome to uh, our games tonight. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? Can't complain. Can't complain. Uh, I obviously am new at this. So our game now is Division 3, Randy's Courtyard 25 versus Black Coffee. Both teams 5-2 and two and trying to get into the Division 3 playoffs. So a pretty big game here. Uh, draft links uh, have been sent out, and it looks like we will be playing one of my favorite maps, which is Towers of Doom. God, I love this map so much. There's just so many things going on all over the place. Super powerful boss, probably one of my favorite bosses in the game, just the look and the feel of the boss and his abilities and things like that. Um, and I did not know that both of these teams uh, were trying to make it into the playoffs, so this should be pretty exciting. Yeah, five and two, so they both have a shot at it, um, if my math is correct. So should be a good game. Should be a good game. We're currently waiting on... I believe we're waiting on a fifth um, from Randy's courtyard. He will be here, I've been assured, but uh, he's just running a little bit behind. Okay. So why don't we talk about Towers of Doom a smidgen while I do some admin stuff here, which I have to do. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, Towers of Doom, three-lane map, pretty big, um, a, a very heavy skirmish map. So uh, essentially the objective for this map is... Uh, Shrines, or rather altars, will spawn in one of four locations, uh, sometimes multiple locations on the map. And it's a team's job to channel those altars for long enough. Um, and once they do, that side's core attacks the other core directly. So, in other words, the teams themselves cannot just push a lane and go straight onto core. It kind of flips the MOBA formula completely on its head, and that's possibly why it's one of my favorite maps. Um, so, um, you know, uh, the, I believe it's the first and the fifth um, altars that spawn are three altars each so normally it's going to be either one two or three the only time it's ever going to be three are the first altars that spawn and the fifth altars that spawn and because these altars are spread around the map um, global heroes get a lot of value here you know Falstad, for example can stay at bottom and channel an altar at bottom if he's uncontested and then fly up to a top altar and try to help his teammates out for example so it, it it's um it's a fairly large map as well. Um, there is a tunnel that leads from the cores, each of one of the sides of the core, straight to the middle of the battleground, which people often forget about, but it also becomes somewhat of a ambush spot for people that are smart enough to uh, check spawn timers as well. So that's like an extra layer of strategy um, that's piled on top of this map that I also really, really enjoy. Apparently, so it'll be we, interesting to see uh, uh, what 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 comps these these teams pull out. Apparently, we have started the draft, and I have not yet um, accommodated for the new draft site. So let me do this real quick. They they ninja it in while we were talking there, but there. Okay, draft... no worries. Yeah, you got it up. It should be up right now. Yep. All right. So we have first ban uh, Zarya. Second ban, Tychus. First pick, Samuro, followed by Muradin and Malfurion. So I'm surprised Samuro made it through, to be honest with you, because he's kind of all over the place right now and uh, wrecking a lot. You have to wonder if either one of those first bans were targeted for either one of these uh, teams here. But really... It that Samuro getting let through puts Randy's Courtyard uh, in a pretty powerful position already. In, in terms of win rates uh, in, in Hero League, he's just absolutely crushing it. He's still sitting well above a 65% win rate. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he translates into competitive, because honestly, he is uh, the reason he does so well in Hero League is because you know he is a, a solo operator, so to speak. He, he really... Uh, gets a lot of his advantage from being able to go around the map and being able to do his own things and then helping the team out when uh, it's it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that gameplay translates into a competitive environment. Yeah, I think he does so well in here, like, because of what you said, of course, 
but he does really good damage. He's really survivable. He's very tough to kill. And in order to counter him properly, it really takes the level of coordination that you just simply don't find in Hero League. And he's unique as a hero in the ways that you have to counter him. So um, I think that's part of the reason uh, people are struggling. I think he also needs a nerf, but um, in competitive, I think he's easier to deal with. So we haven't seen him casting in Chair League yet. I'm very curious to see how they do, but they have Samora Johanna Leeming. That's a ton of damage and a lot of survivability too. All three of those heroes have their own way of surviving and mobility. Ariel was banned out uh, by Black Coffee and Thrall banned out by Randy's Courtyard. Black Coffee responds with a Jaina, which synergizes so well with the mouth roots and the cooldown reductions and mana boost that Malfurion gives. So Malfurion and Jaina is a really good synergy. And Raynor, Excellent synergy with both of those, especially once he gets Executioner at 16. I gotta love my boy Jimmy. Anytime he pops out, I get really excited. He's just my favorite. And, you know, uh, for, for Randy's Courtyard, I really, really, really love the Johanna pick. It absolutely denies uh, Black Black Coffee? Yeah, Black Coffee, The uh, one of those really strong blinds um, that exist in this game. A, a counter to Samuro, a really strong way to, to, to get his damage mitigated is to use blinds and they took that immediately away from black coffee knowing that the muradin had already been picked up and 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 so you know that's just a really really smart move um on their part so now we have randy's courtyard on the clock for their final two selections we're gonna see a healer obviously but the last one could be any number of things i'm surprised none of these um Teams have picked up any globals yet? Okay, so we're going to have a double tank formation here. Uh, Anubarak is going to be the second pickup. Um, not too often do we see Anubarak being picked up um, when they have so many auto... Uh, or sorry, when so many of their... The other team just does damage on auto attacks. But maybe they wanted the anti jaina in the form of his Dampened Magic. And, you know, the other thing about Anubarak is his cocoon is such a strong uh, a battle tool as well. If there is a uh, Jaina that's particularly annoying them, or if maybe they want to get an easy kill on a Malfurion or whatever the fifth pickup is, uh, that cocoon really helps uh, do that pretty pretty well. Yeah, usually you see Anubarak as a direct response to Li Ming because he can body up all of her skill shots and he has the resistance to ability damage. Not as much of a counter to Jaina because so much of her stuff is AoE. It doesn't matter if Anubarak is there or not. It still goes through other than the Ice Lance. And Lily picking up, she's a great healer. Um, uh, good blinds for Raynor. Cups can really carry a team battle. I think Cups might be the most underrated ult in the game. They do have two interrupts in the form, <coughs> excuse me, in the form of Raynor and Muradin. But if a, a properly positioned Lily can be pretty tough to interrupt the cups if she positions herself correctly. You know, Lily was just a, also a really smart pick. Black Coffee honestly could have rounded out that team with a damage Lily to not only get uh, some extra damage out there, but to get the blinds as well on Samuro. So they 100% denied that possibility here. They took both characters that have a blind on a basic ability because they knew they had Samuro on their side. So it's just a really, really smart. And they pick Zeratul, they being Black Coffee, to round out their comp. That's going to put a little pressure on that backline, and you can certainly VP a Cups to take that out of a team fight. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes around. <clears throat> so, yeah, an interesting pickup for sure. All right, well, we can get this game on the road. So, who wins that draft, Mitchell? Uh, you know, I gotta be completely honest, I gotta give it to the side of Randy's Courtyard. Uh, not only did they get the Samuro pick, which is big enough on its own, they took the not obvious route. Instead of banning the counters to Samuro, they just went ahead and took them for themselves. And, you know, those heroes are honestly pretty strong on their own. 
you know, Anubarak has got some pretty strong defense. Johanna's got a pretty strong defense. Lili is going to be able to keep up Johanna and Anubarak mostly pretty easily. Uh, if Leeming does her job and stays in the back line, she shouldn't be too much of of a problem, really. Um, but what is a little scary if you are on the side of Randy's courtyard is the dive that you have on your team. Anubarak is going to, um, uh, you know, try to get in there and do as much as he can. If he uses his burrow to get in on an engagement, that opens up that back line a lot more because you're going to have the follow up from Johanna and Samuro. That Zero Tool pick is pretty informed in that case. If that Anubarak decides to burrow in, that Anubar that Zero Tool is going to have plenty of open space to do whatever he wants to that Li Ming and that Li Li and be able to get out safely at the same time. You took the words right out of my mouth. I, I like Randy's Courtyard's draft. First and foremost, they have Samuro, who is just so strong right now. And just, um, I mean, other than competitive, because none of us are pros here, to be frank, regular Heroes of the Storm players are just struggling to figure out how to beat Samuro. Furthermore, they, they, Black Coffee, have a solo tank Muradin who's going to have to keep Johanna, Anubarak, and Samuro off of a completely immobile Jaina. And I love Jaina, but she is a vulnerable character with very limited mobility, and she is going to have Anubarak and Samuro all over her all game long. And I really think there's going to be a lot of pressure on whoever from Black Coffee is going to be playing Jaina to not put herself in sticky situations. She's just going to have to play very, very conservatively, to be honest. Absolutely. I mean, she doesn't have the range that's offered um, by a lot of other uh, mages that are in the game as well. So she actually has to get in surprisingly close to deal a lot of her damage. Uh, the Cone of Cold that ends up getting a vulnerable at 16 sprouts pretty much from J uh, Jaina's body, um, you know, in the game. So that's that's something that exposes her really a lot. If Black Coffee can make this game last long it will start to eke out in their side. They have the Rainer that eventually gets the Giant Killer and the Executioner. Um, they've got a Zeratul that can absolutely do a lot once he gets up there in those levels. So it really is advantageous if Black Coffee can make this game last a really long time. Um, the Malfurion pick is... is is good for them not only because Malfurion is strong right now um she, he's got a reveal on his w for the samuro that is gonna help sometimes <laughs> uh, not every single engagement they have is going it's going to be useful but if he can land those properly if he can get those clones revealed then it's going to be a lot easier for uh the Zeratul, the rainer the murden to collapse onto the samuro at least know which one is real maybe not even worry about the clones and concentrate on other targets as well. So kind of taking some of that chaos that Samuro creates out of the equation. Yeah, you know, that's something that's not talked about, I don't think, enough with him, is the heroes that have revealing abilities. Tassadars, Scouting Drones, uh, Malfurion you just mentioned, the Tracer Rounds, Lunara. All of those heroes are the easiest way to deal with Samuro, and they do have one in Malfurion. I'm going to go back to... Il Eljana on Jaina, though, the other problem Jaina's going to have is other than Li Ming and a poorly positioned Lili, there's none of the heroes on there that Jaina's really capable of blowing up, which is what she really wants to do. She wants to do her large combo burst damage with all her high cooldowns. So there's going to be a, I mean, just a ton of pressure on the Jaina player to, to make that pick work. Yeah, you know, it may have been a comfort pick. Um, at the same time, Towers of Doom has some of those moments where you're trying to get a camp, the other team is invaded, you guys are in a small section of the map with a very tight corridor. Maybe she's hoping uh, some of those instances can really come out um, in, in favor of that burst of that AoE damage that she has um, with a blizzard. Another good use Jaina has here as well is her poke. If she goes the Isolance build, it's 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 honestly uh, pretty good at keeping people from channeling those uh, altars and just enough so that the uh, just enough so that it's annoying as at the same time. 
it looks like we have a disconnect, so I'm going to pause the game while we get him back. Yeah, I think uh, the cooldown reduction on the Q, even if you don't go a full Ice Lance build here, is, is going to go a long way to help that. Um, like I said, unfortunately, though, it's almost a waste to use it on Johanna, and it's a waste to use it on Anubarak. Her viable targets are very limited. Um, on the side of Black Coffee, we have... Whoa, that's coming up... Uh, Hall, Halbertuk on Zeratul, McFly, awesome name, on Malfurion, Eljana on Jaina, uh, Raynor on Raynor, that's actually Dark Squall who dropped on Raynor, and Rubashov on Muradin. And for the side of Randy's Courtyard, we're going to have Maple Leaves on Samuro, Makeshift on Johanna, Prime Totem on Li Ming, Precursor on Lili, and Gerbs on Anubarak. I'm very interested to see how this game goes. We are ready to go. Well, That's got to be one of those gerbs, gerbs, gif, gif kind of uh, <laughs> problems yeah. there. So if I mispronounce that, I apologize. All right, let's see if these teams opt to go for the five-on-five eSports five skirmish. Three, two, A little B-stuffing from Zeratul there. And it looks like Black Coffee will be ready for their five-on-five five skirmish, and Randy's Courtyard is going to lane. So we will not have the little useless skirmish in the middle. You know, that's okay. Not every game needs to start with a lot of noise. That's true. That's true. But for us announcers, as casters here, we live on the noise. This is very true. <laughs> well, this will give us a little bit of a chance to... Well, Red Team just kind of... Invaded there. That was weird. All right. They did catch out, catch out Samuro. Stun from Muradin. The, and this is one of the issues with <laughs> Samuro right now. Is He is too survivable for his damage. He got into trouble, just popped a bunch of clones, and walked away. And that's, <laughs> that's so frustrating, man. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely the, the power that this character has right now. Not only does he does do amazing damage, he can just pretty much walk out of any engagement. You see it right there again at the top lane. You know, he was just getting some sight for them right at the beginning. His uh, Windwalk expired, Zeratul, and Mel uh, Muradin thought that they were going to be able to catch him out, but he just walked away. And, you know, not only is, are his uh, illusions very useful, but when he pops it, it randomly... It, it, all of a sudden, Samuro may not be the Samuro that's in front of you, even if he was when he popped the illusion. Right. It's completely RNG uh, which one he will end up being. Even he doesn't know which one he'll nope. end up being. See, and those are the blizzards that you can't have get no value right there. Um, I play a lot of Jaina. When I play Jaina in, in early skirmishes like this, I almost always drop them on the minion wave, and if I happen to catch a hero in it, all the better. You know, because there's nothing as painful that Jaina that's more painful than and then getting nothing out of your horses. It's just too high of a cooldown in order uh, to make nothing happen. I know if I'm playing against Jaina, one of the things I look for is a blown blizzard, because that gives me my entrance to go in and make a move. So far, we have nice synergy here from Zeratul and Muradin, and they're able to pick off Leeming at the worst possible time for Randy's Courtyard, which is right when these are spawning. So, uh, Black Coffee is going to have a small window to take advantage before the short cooldowns, and Leeming gets back. Anubarak gets absolutely destroyed, and there's another no-value blizzard. However, this is still this battle is still in favor of Black Coffee. Uh, Nubarak coming to re-engage. It's still a four on three. Now, Randy's Courtyard did channel and capture the bottom shrine, and Nubarak gets destroyed. High-value Blizzard there. And so far, each team has captured one shrine, and they are fighting over the third. Muradin dive in with no mana and no escape. He is wrecked by Samuro. It looks like Raynor is going to go down as well. Even chasing him through the Blizzard, they're still able to pick him off. And two kills on the side of Randy Courtyard. Black Coffee loses uh, two shrines while only capturing one small early lead to Randy's Courtyard. That was that was really smartly done by Randy's Courtyard. Lily stayed out there um, near that shrine as as 
long as she possibly could. She knows she's squirrely. She had a bunch of health, a bunch of mana, uh, able to you know bring that that health back up, and she allowed Jaina and Semero to come back in to that engagement, um, and they were able to convert that into two kills. It's great, great moves. It's really you know you said squirrely with Lily, and Ed, I've said Cups is the most underrated ultimate, and I think that might be Lily's most underrated um, asset to her team is I'm going to go out on a limb and say out of the non-tank characters, is Lili the squirreliest, the toughest to kill, other than maybe Samuro right now, who's due to get nerfed? Right. Other than the person who has a one-second unbreakable stealth, Lili is just absolutely a nightmare to kill. I mean, and the longer the game goes on, the worse it gets for you, because the more her healing actually ends up doing, um, and, you know, her different talents and things like that, which she is going for a Serpent build, for example. So, it, it, it it's one of those things that it really, really is really underestimated. Just because she doesn't have that targeted healing doesn't necessarily mean that she doesn't add a lot of things uh, to a battle other than just the pure Q uh, heal. Yeah, she's a high damage dealer, healer. It is kind of random damage, but she's a high damage healer, and her healing volume is okay. It's just not targeted heal. So those are just things you have to learn uh, how to work around, you know? And her healing output is not small by any stretch of no. the imagination. She's, she's probably average healing volume. It's just not targeted, and it's concentrated into her ultimate that you have to make sure that you use properly. You can't waste her cups because it's such a high percentage of her heals. There is another high value Blizzard Muradin diving in on the Anubrak. He was down to 67 hit points, but he's still going away. And now Muradin might be in trouble. Another dwarf toss to get out of there. Rubishov still fighting one on three and his Muradin trying to just walk away. He's very low, down to 340 hit points. He gets away. There is a lot of damage going down for not a lot of kills here. Rainer barely gets away with a shotgun and the E. Oh, Zeratul is caught and de stealthed with a lean mean combo. I want to see Black Coffee withdraw here. Once Zeratul went down, they needed to withdraw. They don't. Malfurion falls. Muradin is going to fall as well. I think that re-engagement was not a very good decision. Once Zeratul left, oh man, an orb deletes Rainer. And now they are two levels up. And yeah, they capture that they, ultimate. Yeah, they're slowly closing the gap here. It's going to be a while before they can. But, you know, that, that engagement started with a split as well. Muradin got really, really a hankering for some bug meat in uh, Anubarak, and he just overcommitted, split entirely from his teammates. And if there's one thing that you cannot do as an anti-auto-attack character is leave the auto-attacker, in this case, Samuro, to run a muck in your back line. It's just not something that you can afford to do, especially in early levels like this. And when you're your team's only tank. Now, if he were, he had him down to 67 hit points. So, I mean, we're one auto attack away from killing a Nubrak. So, if he gets that kill, maybe it's worth it. Dark Squall is taking so much damage from those mercenaries. You gotta back up and let the minions soak that. He took a ton of free damage there from the minions for, for basically nothing. Okay, Ultimates coming out here for Randy's Courtyard. <clears throat> we have Locust Swarm, not Cocoon, from Anubarak. Cups, of course, from Lili. Disintegrate from Li Ming. Blessed Shield from Johanna. And Blade Storm from Samuro. In the middle of In all the that, Rainer went yeah. down, getting picked off by a team of five. And this bottom fort is going to go down. Black Randy's Coffee Courtyard is in really trouble ahead. here. Yeah, they went ahead and got both of those camps down there and got a really, really strong push at bottom. Uh, Rainer was just trying to defend. He was trying to do his best to keep those minions off of that bottom keep, but he got caught out by almost every single member except for Lili of Randy's Courtyard coming in and, and cleaning that up. Now we're going to have two altars spawn here, mid and bottom, uh, with Black Coffee um, coming up. So they're a little bit... Uh, uh, in an okay spot at this point. We just had ultis pop, so Ring of Frost is going to come out for Gina, Avatar for Muradin, um, Tranquility for Malfurion, Hyperion for Raynor, and Void Prison for Zeratul. Now we have a 5 on 5 Johanna just in there with her Condemn and her Iron Skin wreaking havoc and buying enough time for Leeming on the backside to channel it. She then goes in there, Jaina goes down, Malfurion goes down, 
Those are the immobile characters that we were talking about. They were targeted and exploded. And the squirreliness of Lily, she is still going strong with her cups absolutely baited almost all of Black Coffee, and they couldn't finish her. Talk about predicting that, man. We told you how squirrely she is. She pulled Black Coffee's team so far away from her to try to kill her, and they were unable to secure the kill. When you see a healer that low, it's hard not to put everything you have into getting rid of her, uh, just because that's, that's one more uh, avenue of sustain that that team has that you kind of want to get rid of. But, you know, uh, uh, Randy's Courtyard is going to take their advantage. They're going to push in here on this middle keep, tr uh, getting 13 uh, just as they do. Um, <clears throat> it looks like Black Coffee sends two members down to the bottom keep to try to take that back at the same time. They're not going to be able to take it right away, but they are eventually going to be able to cap that. Yeah, Black Coffee definitely in trouble here. They're two, two full levels down. They are 18 hit points left on the core to 36. So Randy's Courtyard definitely in the driver's seat. If there's one thing we have learned about Towers of Doom, though, is it is very viable for comebacks. We've all seen those epic comebacks with one hit points left. Still, though, I think what we said in the beginning, I, this is a little bit early on the cups. I don't know if that was really necessary, but certainly nobody going down from Randy's courtyard. The immobility on the side of Black Coffee, I think, is, come, is, is hurting them. Malf and Jaina just are having a really hard time. Samuro was deep in those enemy lines trying to get a Malfurion kill. Fortunately, he wasn't able to get it. And that 18 second long stealth um, was, was no problem to stay back there for that long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Black Car Black Coffee still may be in this game. They're still making some strong moves. Uh, the last two altars that spawned were extra valuable for Randy's courtyard, and they ended up getting both of them, um, which put an extra two shots on the core. But uh, this engagement's not going well. Johanna moving in, Samuro moving in, trying to put some pressure as well. Muradin, again, split from his team. Zeratul, the same. Uh, they just can't get in there to coordinate uh, to get on the, uh, this team right now. Now, that was a ton of value on that blizzard. And there's a five-man all oh, void prism. And the ring of frost setup was there. The, the timing wasn't. I think that would have been an ace had they coordinated that. That would have been beautiful. There was just a little bit of communication there. A Zeratul can't take down the Void Prism. I think it's it's like a second, second and a half or something yeah, like something that. Like yeah, that. it's very short. But but there is a time when he cannot take it down. So there was just a little bit of mistiming right there. Yeah, either Zeratul and both was of a... these altars are going to go to Randy's courtyard. Either Zeratul was a little quick to pull the trigger, or Jaina was a little bit quick to pull the trigger. Either way, that was really close to an awesome play and instead it goes down as a missed opportunity for black coffee Randy's courtyard as well gonna pick up the boss it's gonna put four shots on the core immediately really smart move a really 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 long respawn timer for the boss on this map so we may not even see another one before the game is out at this point we've got 36 health on the side of Randy's courtyard and just six on the side of black coffee yeah what that means is the only altar that Black Coffee has managed to channel was the first one at level three during the triple altar spawn phase. And Randy's courtyard is not taking any pressure off the neck of Black Coffee, trying uh, to go for the kill as much as possible, getting both of these bottom camps here and gonna probably try to push in, at least hopefully they hit. Um, and it looks like they're trying to defend it as well. Uh, Black Coffee trying to at least get some, nope, this is just too strong. The engagement, the Anubarak burrowing in, and the burst from uh, Li Ming is really, really strong. Yeah, you know, once two again, members. Look at the two members yeah. that are down. It's Mouth and Jaina. Just their lack of mobility with the hero composition that Randy's Courtyard has, that lack of mobility combined with the solo tank Muradin, they just they can't keep the back line alive. And furthermore their solo tank and them have been a little bit split they haven't seemed quite on the same page and while muradin is awesome he doesn't have the huge peels like if they had a johanna to just pull them away from that back line muradin just really isn't capable of doing that three altars here are going to spawn so this is the fifth run uh black coffee sending all of their members down to the bottom one to try to channel that one. Samuro is already channeling top left and they this are just going to go for game. the top right one and that, that should game. be game right there. We got two out of the three uh, ch uh, altars channeled.
for Randy's Courtyard. Great showing by Randy's Courtyard. You and I say this a lot. Games are not won and lost in the draft more often than not. However, Randy's Courtyard set themselves up for success with that draft. Those team comps was much more difficult for Black Coffee to do than it was for Randy's Courtyard. Much more difficult. Absolutely. I mean, they not only, I mean, Semero is one of those heroes right now at the moment that just needs to be accounted for, I think. Um, when you're in a competitive environment like this, there's something to be said for just dealing with those overpowered heroes outright and making them either not an option for either team or the option for your team. That's what Randy's Courtyard did here. And they got the heroes to back him up at the same time that countered him at as well the johanna and the lily and even the anubarak in a way uh, these heroes are not only counters to samuro but they can help him do a lot too um i, I gotta give it to that Li ming though she was on point with all of her combos yeah, i was. saw her miss very very few really of those as well and so the, the the burst that comes out from both of these heroes, all three of these heroes, really with Anubarak included in that, uh, really, really put a hurt on Black Coffee. Now, I wonder, the <clears throat> the ban that Black Coffee opted to do that let Samuro be drafted was Tychus. That strikes me as a little bit different because they didn't go with a double tank so you have to wonder, was that a targeted ban? Did they do their homework and think that the other team prioritized Tychus? Which they may, we'll never know. But I just, I think you can't let the Samoro through. And poor Muradin and poor Malfurion and poor Jaina were under so much pressure. Jaina and Malfurion, with their simple lack of mobility to get away from a mobile, fast, aggressive team like that, and Muradin with the pressure to try to peel for those guys with a kit that would be hard-pressed to do it with an Anubarak and a Samoro in there, plus he's trying to eat the Leeming Orbs. I think it was just the margin for error for Black Coffee was so much smaller. Yeah, they definitely had the burden of execution in this game. And, you know, at the same time, maybe the Tychus was a targeted ban. Maybe they were even forward-thinking into, we want to maybe do a dual frontline with two tanks, and Tychus is a counter to tanks, so... <clears throat> in that regard, they may have wanted, uh, it may have been a ban for the strategy of their comp, but, you know, we've talked about this all the time, maybe they were playing too many mind games, maybe they right. were trying to, yeah. maybe they were even trying to get that Malfurion so badly that they said, okay, you can take S Samuro right now, and, and we can at least assure ourselves that we can get the Malfurion. Yeah, and that's probably what Randy's Courtyard was doing. They banned, I don't even remember who they banned, was it Zarya? And they're basically saying, we're going to get Samuro or Mouth. And I think if you're Black Coffee, you have to say, take Mouth, because we're not letting you get Samuro. But the other thing, too, is when they banned Tychus, Randy's Courtyard took that as, well, great. We'll double tank it then, because you don't have a Tychus. <laughs> He's not on the Absolutely. board anymore. You gave us that avenue in your draft, essentially, with the first ban. So, yeah, I, I, you got to wonder exactly what happened there. So, a big win, a great showing for Randy's Courtyard. They are now 6-2 and two in Division 3. I haven't actually done the math, but I imagine that will probably put them into the Division 3 playoffs. I would be surprised if they weren't with a 6-2 and two record. And Black Coffee now falls to 5-3, and three, which also still a very good record, so... Maybe they sneak in. You never know. So we have one more game coming up here, and it's going to come up in about 20 minutes or so. So why don't we talk about that draft? And they first picked, what, Mouth and Muradin. What would we have drafted instead, maybe, to, to count? You know, the only thing that I would have done here is not have done the Muradin pick. Uh, when you pick your tank that early, it really does limit yourself. Unless you know for sure what your the rest of your team comp is going to be, a, a first pick of a tank like that is 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 harsh for you because it allows your the the other team the opportunity to counter that specific tank. For example, um, 
ETC is one of those uh, heroes, one of those tanks we don't see drafted early a lot because of how many tanks there are to mosh pit. Now, there's another discussion there about how stage dive is coming into more prominence and all of that. But at the same time, uh, the Li Ming is such a great counter to Muradin. Oftentimes, Muradin just stands still and does his job. He gets his stuns out. He does his W to get some attack speed and, and body slow on there. But for all of that, he is really not a mobile hero unless he's using his jump. So Li Ming there was, was you know, just a, a, a great counter to Muradin like that. Um, I am not aware, uh, and, and, you know, neither of us are aware of the full extent of the rosters for either of one course. of these teams. Um, it seems like Randy's Courtyard may be a little bit more flexible in their... Uh, in their um, hero pool so that may have informed a lot of what black coffee was doing here they went for pretty standard picks besides the zero tool more or less um and speaking of that's probably another thing that I, I i'm not sure i would have done you know me uh i love this guy but leoric fits in there really 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 well with the, the two tank. tanks mm -hmm. yeah, yeah absolutely i mean maybe they have nobody that's strong enough to do it but at the same time that gives you <clears throat> not only the anti-tank another strong high health frontliner to that allows the, the back line to do that job exactly to soak up those skill shots to soak up the anubarak stuns to do these things that keep those people off of the back line of black coffee yeah. so uh, I wouldn't say that the Murden was a bad choice by any time. Maybe leave him a little bit later into the draft and get a secure a damage dealer that you want for yourself. Um, but at the same time, you have to look for those opportunities to counter what the other team is doing. That's why I like having last pick so much. You know, in, in a bubble, in a vacuum, looking at Black Coffee's comp, it's a very traditional, straightforward comp, and it's a solid comp. A solid tank, solid healer, you have a burst damage dealer, a sustained damage dealer, and you have Zeratul. Especially if you trade out for Zeratul for somebody like a Thrall or a Sonya, then you have a really nice, well-rounded out traditional comp. It's only, the weaknesses only start to come out when you look at the team that was set against them. I would, if you're going to do um, the Mouth and the Jaina like that, I would have liked to have seen them either A, draft Johanna up front instead of Muradin, because Johanna can stand in there with Samuro. Or the ETC who sets up Malfurion and Jaina so well. One of those two I would have liked to have seen. If you know you're targeting Malf and you know you're targeting Jaina, ETC sets those heroes up just perfectly with how well he controls the front line. But once the other team picks Samuro, I almost think you have to draft anything and everything you can to deal with that. And that to me means Johanna first. Absolutely. I mean, that was a big missed opportunity there for the side of Black Coffee. Again, we don't know the extent of their hero pool, but having access to blinds, having access to things that deal with such a strong hero at the moment is something that has to be on the forefront of your mind. You know, maybe Black Coffee got exactly what they wanted out of this draft. Maybe they knew what they wanted going into it, and the Samuro they just didn't want to. They just didn't expect to counter. Um, but yeah, you're 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 totally right. When you see something that's dominating a game like this so much at at the moment, you just you have to deal with it. There's just no choice. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen like a JoJo Malfurion to start off would have been great because Malf can reveal Samuro, so that's an active counter. To him as well. I would like to have seen another beefy frontliner, somebody up there that Samuro can't just blow up. Um, Sonya would have been fine. You know, Sonya can spin to win in the middle of all of those uh, illusions, you know? It's no problem for her. Yeah. yeah, those illusions count as heroes, so anything that stacks off of heroes, anything that gets more damage based off of heroes, in the case of Sonya, what does more healing based off of you hitting heroes would absolutely get more value based off of Samuro, uh, based off of the illusions. And I love me some Jaina, but I don't know that I would ever draft Jaina into a Samuro just for her lack of mobility. I mean, she, Jaina, is, Jaina and Kael'thas are very similar heroes in that they both offer CC. Jaina has soft CC. Kael'thas has hard CC. They both offer good wave clear, AoE, a targeted uh, damage spell, living bomb, and Q. And they both have no mobility. 
Um, and you just have to be aware of that. There are just certain situations that it's very difficult to take those two characters into, and I think Samuro is one of them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's not necessarily a mage backline, but a Sylvanas instead of a Jaina would have been um, a great pickup there uh, for Black Coffee. And she's Gives good her... on this map, too. Yeah, she, I mean, Push is highly underrated on this map. We saw just how powerful Push can be because Randy's Courtyard did it. They showed us taking those altars how much faster they can end a game um, when you when you actually end up getting those shrines and those shots off. Um, plus, it gives the other team something that they now have to deal with. They have no keep there. So, uh, you know, Sylvanas is not only a great pick for this map, would have been that extra little bit of squirrely backline damage dealer um, that could have done a lot of uh, staying away from Samuro as well. Uh, Rainer is not not a bad choice. He's got the uh, Revolution Overdrive he's got, at he's seven. Got the which gives him the, so yeah, yeah. He's got the survivability that Jaina doesn't have. That Sylvanas kind of has built into her kit in the form of the uh, uh, E in the form of the teleport. So th I would have liked to have seen something a little bit more mobile there as well. You're you're totally right about that. And you know something I don't hear talked about enough either, specifically to Samuro. I had about two games against a Samuro as a Zul, and he has some interesting tools to deal with him. One, it's really hilarious when you're on Zul and he attacks you with all of his illusions and they start and you tap your shade and there's like 700 procs of the word missed on the screen as all of his illusions and him miss all of their basic attacks. Furthermore, your W, which is an attack speed slow, if you get it to the right angle, you can actually hit all of the illusions and the real one. Yeah, that's a 40% attack speed slow. That can be upgraded to 75%. 75%. I mean, talk about a Samuro counter. That is just one of those things where once that talent is chosen, you start to cut out everything that Samuro is able to do. And, he, and I, I do believe he took Bladestorm in this game, yes, so he, he had a one exactly one source of ability damage. Uh, it's not necessarily a still a bad choice um, there to go for, 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 for the Zul. Yeah, what Zul does against Samuro is he doesn't really take away from what Samuro can do, but it's one less target that he can do it to. Because if you go Poison Nova after 10, he can't... When you see all three of those guys on you, you blow your Poison Nova because you're going to hit him. So it's just... With the Shade, he can't attack you. With the Attack Speed Slow, he can't really attack you. With the Nova, he can't really attack you. So it's just one less target that Samuro can deal with. You know, something else that's sticking out to me now, uh, Black Coffee, I feel like, with the first ban, Tychus not only shot themselves in the foot for, A, not banning Samuro, but uh, I, you know, Tychus would have been a great fill-in. Tychus and Rainer, both of them, uh, deal a, a large amount of damage, and, and Tychus would have been especially useful for the dual tanks that uh, Randy's Courtyard have. And he's still got, a, you know, not as strong as maybe a teleport from Sylvanas, but it's still a built-in escape with a little uh, push on his running gun. Uh, so that's that's kind of now going over this draft again. It's kind of sticking out to me as, as um, a missed opportunity for sure. Yeah, you know, on, on our team, what we really focused on a lot is um, we, we have a new team this year, the two of us with uh, our teammates, and um, we felt that we weren't, getting we weren't setting ourselves up for success in the draft and toward the end of the season we really started honing in on coming in with a game plan doing your homework knowing what you want to do and last week was a perfect example we had our game plan in mind we knew exactly what we wanted to do but we were flexible enough with our last picks to change one pick from what we wanted because otherwise we got exactly what we wanted and that one pick really put us over the top last week so there's definitely a fine line between coming in with your game plan, knowing who you want to keep the other team from getting, knowing who you want to get your players on, but having the flexibility to adjust when things come up to get yourself in a more ideal situation. So striking that balance between holding on to your game plan and being flexible at the same time. Yeah, uh, I think that that is really showcased with Randy's courtyard uh their draft 
there's they showed uh you know a lot of flexibility there in terms of being able to capture those counters back um and having players that were really competent on those counters as well the johanna and the lily were were uh, both of them they were uh, outstanding in, in doing what they needed to do uh i'm not sure if you were focusing on it but right at the beginning of that game johanna was leaning against Rainer at the at the bottom and Johanna had almost killed Rainer um, before, you know, Rainer figured it out and needed to leave. But <clears throat> because of that blind is so powerful, because she's got the slow and the stun, it allows her a lot of that stoppage uh, to get a lot of damage in on him. So uh, the flexibility in a drafting is is really, really, really important in this game. We're, we're finally getting to the point where the hero pool is large enough Um that I, I I do believe it it has started to become less and less about just get your two or three characters in your role that you're really good at, um, and and I and you need to start thinking about other roles that can do the same job as you. So for example, um, you always talk about Sonya, even though she's labeled as a warrior. You always refer to her as a melee assassin because that's the role um, she fills. Absolutely. She fills that frontline role. Um, I am falling in love with Leoric because he can put a hurt on somebody no matter who they are. That percentage-based damage hurts squishies just as much as it hurts uh, tanks. It hurts tanks more, but that doesn't mean that it's completely useless against squishies. So uh, thinking about the hero pool as it is, the whole entire Heroes of the Storm roster... Um, it, it does require a little bit of creativity to really, really think about um, how you can fill those roles with different styles of heroes. So, and, and it's not just it's, the style it, and the role they fill too, but it's the style and the role you fill and how they interact with the map and how they interact with the other heroes you have selected or are going to select and how they interact with the heroes the enemy has selected or possibly might select as well. I mean, there's so many considerations to take into account. Before we go off for just a minute, because um, we're going to take about a five-minute breather before our next game, the other thing I don't think we talked about as much, because the draft was such a huge part of this, is in these team fights, it, it went unnoticed simply because Randy's courtyard got up so far so fast that it almost wasn't relevant. But I think when the players go back and they watch the replay amongst themselves and they watch the casting that we did here, they're going to see there was definitely a difference in how the two teams approached the team fighting. And this is something our team has worked on a lot, too, that we've gotten a lot better, is Randy's Courtyard was much more of a cohesive unit fighting from within themselves. And Black Coffee was much more scattered their, especially their solo tank left the back line and the, the fight was so scattered whereas Randy's courtyard was much more together they were much more cohesive and I think even if the fights were even in level and the two teams had an even burden of execution that particular function of how the two teams were fighting in that environment as a 5 on 5 also was an advantage for Randy's courtyard as well yeah, I mean, you, you just you nailed it. I mean, there is so much to be said for how a team chooses to approach a, a fight. Um, and even the individual choices that get made in those fights and how they affect an entire game in this case. Uh, in, and in most cases, actually. Uh, the Muradin splitting off at the first engagement it was, it was such a tell i think for randy's courtyard as well and the, like the one thing that you 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 know that you only didn't mention there is teams learn teams figure stuff out in game the the entire act you know you you kind of touched on this in even the uh the podcast that we were doing just or that you were doing sorry just before this in uh trying to you know get uh, some of those silvers and bronze out of their own leagues when you enter a game what you're trying to do very often is gather as much data as possible you're trying to gather data on your own team and your own players and on the other team and on their players as well uh, and having uh, knowing that your Muradin is going to chase low life uh, heroes is something that I think Randy's Courtyard may have actually taken advantage of sure. at a certain point in the game for sure um, but it's 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 one of those things where it, 
you're completely right. It's not only was it a really bad for the rest of their comp, but it something like that just tells the other team so much about how that one particular hero is going to approach his gameplay, which can be just a huge, huge benefit. You know, and the difference between, of course, Hero League and this is you don't have to spend the time or energy evaluating how good your teammates are. You should really have a feel for that, you would think. So that allows the team to focus on evaluating their opposition in game and allows it to be that much more effective to pick up on those kinds of things. We had this happen to us in our game two weeks ago where we really controlled the early part of the game even though we didn't get as much of a lead as we wanted to and the other team made a big adjustment and that adjustment was in the early part of the game they were trying to flank us with Lunara, they were trying to flank us with Jaina, you were on Kerrigan, you caught him out on it twice both times we punished the player for it, we won the team fight, and we got the tribute. After 10, they no longer did that, and they made an adjustment with their comp that we couldn't counter, and we lost to that adjustment because they made the adjustment in-game based on evaluating what we were doing, and we were unable to counter that. So for sure that happens all the time. That's yeah, a really, really strong and powerful uh, part of the gameplay that uh, really goes unaccounted for. It's one of those intangible things. You can't really, you know, put a number on it. You can't really put a factor, a figure, or a platitude on it. It's just one of those things that comes with experience, I think. For sure. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, Game 1, Black Coffee Falling to Randy's Courtyard, uh, Division 3 game. I think we'll see Randy's Courtyard in the Division 3 playoffs. We might see black coffee depending on how this rolls out we have another game coming up it is a placement game which is machos alpha their first chair league game versus beards and broads currently sitting 0-2 in placement we're going to take about a five minute break here and we will be back with one more fun filled chair league game
Well, Mitch, we're back, and unfortunately, we do not have a second game. Oh, that's such a big disappointment. Isn't it, though? Yeah, I'm pretty bummed. I really don't like it when that happens. It looks like the two teams had a miscommunication, I'm going to call it, over the reschedule or possible reschedule. Uh, so no game, unfortunately. And thanks for those of you who were here. We did have one game when we had the Bronze Age 2, of course, if any of you hung out from that. So for those of you who are here, uh, have a wonderful night. I mean, we could stream Hero League if you want to do that. If anyone wants to watch us play, we could do that, I suppose. But otherwise, thanks for hanging out, guys. No second Chair League game today, unfortunately. Hope everybody has a great evening. Yeah, thanks everybody who tuned in for doing so. I, you know, I'm still glad we got to cast a game as it is. So, that's that's okay. One game much better than none. That's for sure. If I had another replay to queue up, I would. Uh, but the th you know the thing about casting, Codatius is, after casting, I really want to play. <laughs> it just gets that itch it, it going. It does. It really does. Honestly, I don't know how like Kaloran and Cavalier guest cast so much, and those guys are both really good at this, and they're a lot of fun to watch. And Cavalier guest has the level of knowledge that he throws out there is like crazy. But I just I couldn't cast that much and not play. <laughs> so have a good night, everybody. Uh, we will uh, check out my Twitch. Uh, I have all of my schedule up there. Follow me on Twitter. I post when I'm going to be up on Twitter as well. Have a good night.